the story of the RAF's lightning advance in Libya includes one particularly interesting capture, a German Fiesler Stoch plane. In many respects, the opposite number of our Lysander and a very efficient cooperation machine. It was adopted by Air Vice Marshal Cunningham, here seen with Air Marshal Tedder, taking off on a flight to inspect progress in forward areas. It needs very little runway for landing or takeoff. The RAF's advance broke all speed records. It was a major contribution to our decisive victory over Rommel. To move the aircraft themselves isn't a difficult problem, of course, but to move the ground staff and their equipment, to move all the means of servicing the squadrons, all the spares and all the fuel for men and machines, calls for masterly organization. No campaign so far has provided a more brilliant example of that organization than the great leap forward from Egypt towards Tripolitania. Brief halts were made as our planes landed close by the wreckage of German aircraft on each newly captured airfield. In the air, the Royal Air Force was able to guard our long supply columns following closely in the wake of the retreating Africa Corps. After the terrific beating administered to the Luftwaffe, we dominated the air and our vehicles were able to drive forward in close formation. So fast were the RAF's movements westward that along all the hundreds of miles of Rommel's headlong retreat, British and American bombers were giving the Germans hell. Down there, struggling along the road and dispersed in the desert to the side of the road, are German vehicles. Right among them went bomb after bomb, blowing Germans and German trucks to pieces, smashing them and blasting them, exploding once and for all Rommel's boast that he would soon be in Suez. Beside the road or on the road, but all the time ripping into the remnants of a routed German army. <laughs> 